Hi, this is Mitch Doan, and along with Jamie Richardson, we're your hosts of the Breakthrough Active podcast. We aim to deep dive into health and fitness that will help bring you a better understanding of topics that are of interest to you and can help you on your own journey. If you are enjoying the episodes, we'd love for you to leave us a rating on the platform you listen to your podcasts. Enough from me, sit back, relax, and enjoy the episode. Hello, everybody. Welcome back again to the Break Directive podcast. I'm here with one of our members from our Adamstown gym. I've got Dave with me today, mate. So, g'day, Dave. Appreciate you coming on, mate. How's it going? Yeah, good, mate. Thanks for having me. Things are oh, well. Of course. Yep. Yeah, good to hear. We were just talking a little bit uh, before we hit record here about the uh, Supercars weekend. So, tell us a little bit more about what uh what your role i guess the next few days will be you've got a big work event in quotations tomorrow yeah so well, um, you, what you got on yeah well i run a commercial cleaning business in newcastle and we look after a lot of apartment complexes uh, around town and uh some of the two of the buildings i look after are actually inside the racetrack there in newcastle so it's going to be quite hectic in there and people are going to be throwing rubbish around so <laughs> just got to make sure my my staff the people I work with every day are prepared and we've got extra bins out and that our properties are still going to stay nice and clean yeah. so and it's uh, an opportunity opportunity for me to see the race myself mm, work perks as they call yeah. it have yeah. you um have you been in any of the years gone by or is this your first time it's, I've gone every year yeah. um bit of a tradition actually but I I only go on the Friday, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, you're saying that's more of like the like it's how did quite, you explain it to me? Like it's a bit more about the cars and not so much about the race itself. Yeah. Like I just want I just want the experience. And there's not as many people there on the Friday, so you can actually walk up to the fence and see what's going on properly, which is pretty cool. Yeah. I remember when they first uh brought it to Newcastle, it might have been oh shit. 2018 maybe am i right with that around that yeah one or one or one year either way maybe um but it was huge i remember like it was so so popular that that first year and uh, i mean i was kind of wondering if maybe it's lost its appeal a little bit but what, what do you feel like it has done the last few years popularity I, I, I don't think it's lost its appeal i guess we'll find out very shortly mm. but um like i think it's a very exciting event that's like close to home. That's a lot of fun. Um, and it hasn't been on in a couple of years because of COVID. So True. Um, I think people would be super stoked that, you know, we're having events like yeah. this again in Newcastle. Yeah. And if you don't have to go to Sydney for something like, I feel like people from Newcastle rally behind anything that's local just because it's, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes, you know, trip or, or closer if you live close to town. So yeah, that'd be cool, mate. You can you can see how popular it is based off how much rubbish there is on the ground. Yeah, we'll we'll know for sure when the place is trashed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how busy it is. Um, yeah, cool. Well, that'll be fun, mate. You'll have to let us know how it's uh how it all goes tomorrow. And it's going to be I think, pretty pretty bloody hot. So that might might be uh might throw a cat amongst the pigeons. You might need a big old hat and umbrella or something. I think people will be working extra hard to keep themselves hydrated with yeah. the beers. Yeah. 90% water, right? Beer is. Oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> so they say. I don't know how much truth there is to that, but we'll go with that. But yeah. uh, no, Dave, you got started with us about midway through last year, if my memory serves me correct. Uh, and right. yeah, and, and you live just down the road. So obviously like that was kind of how you came across it um i think you saw us on facebook or something but obviously with it just being close by it was was very handy but tell us a little bit about what you had done um i guess previously like exercise wise like have you played any sport done your own gym bit like tell us a bit bit about that yeah i guess before i joined um breakthrough you know i had in my head oh i want to be healthy i want to be exercising but i wasn't really that committed to doing it um, as an adult, I never really played any sports or anything, only when I was younger. Um, so mostly I just procrastinated and wish I was doing something. 
But um, a couple of years ago, I did join um, just like a standard old gym and I was going there like three days a week with my friend and he was trying to, sh- he was showing me the ropes and telling me what to do and, and that was good. Um, but then the days where he was busy and I tried to go by myself, I just had an awful time. You know, I wasn't having fun. I had no sense of accountability. Um, I didn't have much direction about what I should have been doing. And it was very easy for me to just give up and go home <laughs> when I'd had enough of working out for the day instead of sticking sticking it through. So eventually I stopped going and, you know, got rid of my membership there and and went back to just doing nothing. Yeah, it's a, it's a fairly common common thing and and it can be easy for us uh i guess you know trainers and and you know us who obviously run the sessions to to kind of think that once you guys walk in the 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 facility and you get started with your session like you know you're going to be in for a pretty good workout because we're there obviously got other people around you like it's just getting in through the doors that, that can be the challenging thing some days but it's something we hear quite often for people who have done their own bit you know the their commercial gym with a friend or by themselves and and there are days where they go in and they walk on the treadmill for 10 minutes and then they walk over to the machines and kind of fumble their way through a couple of sets and then they're looking at their phone and then all of a sudden they just leave because they can't be can't be bothered so it's a bit of a familiar tale Um, and even you know in my experience in years gone by before I actually you know started running our business and then got into the industry. There was times when I'd do that too. I'd be training by myself um, and you just don't have motivation some days. And I think that's a really big part of being in the group environment where even if you're not feeling your best, you can sort of always get a pretty good workout in. So what sort of changes have you seen? Like since you started with us, obviously it's what, eight months, eight, eight-ish months now. Like what sort of changes have you seen in, in your own health and, and fitness and, and everything? Um, there's been a couple of changes. Like I remember when I first started, it was just a challenge for me to, you know, make it to the end of the workout at all um, in, the, in the allotted time. And that's okay. I think after the first two to three weeks, I had started to build up enough fitness where I was actually finishing the workouts, which I was super stoked. And now that we've gone months, um, more and more months and we're through the program, you know, actually, I remember I did, uh, I went, did the walk at Mount Tomary about two months ago and I walked to the top and there was people up there sweating and like, you know, gasping for air. And I was just feeling normal. I was feeling fine. And I was, that was a good point of realization for me. And I'm like, I actually have come a long way in my fitness. Um, so that was good. And there's also a lot of other physical changes, you know, just a, a little flex in the mirror. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh, my arms are looking a little a little bit bigger than they used to. Um, and, and that's just the physical stuff. Like my mental health has had a huge change. Um, you know, having a pretty stressful job, it's good for me to know. At the end of the day, I've scheduled myself in to go, you know, go to the group personal training sessions with you guys. Um, and I'm not going to give up. I'm going to push through the workout and prove to myself that number one, I can do it, but obviously just working out just makes me feel good about who I am and, and my body. Yeah, no, that's, that's awesome, man. And I think, I think it's, it can be easy to overlook that, um, you know, mental side of things. I think the physical stuff's great too, obviously like doing an everyday uh, not an everyday task, but like something like going on that that hike up Tomari and you see other people that, you know, maybe really laboring and struggling and you just feel like, you know, didn't even probably feel like a workout to you, just felt like you're going for, for a walk. And then seeing changes in, in how your body looks, I think, you know, regardless of what people say, I think that is important to, to most people with seeing some change in their physical body. I don't think it's right at the top of the pyramid, but I think it's nice to see that the hard work you're putting in, you know, paying off with what you see. But, you know, from a, I guess, a headspace and a mental health perspective, you know, we, we, we've become pretty, pretty good friends and we, we talk about, uh, you know, running businesses and talk about the specifics of that and, and no, and I think this goes for people who don't run a business as well, but, you know, when you talk to other business owners, you, you know, that 
there is a level of stress and a le- level of, I guess, worry and concern and, and ongoing feeling that, you know, the work is always on your mind because it's it's not like a job where you just clock off and then you turn up the next day and, and go again. So before you were exercising regularly, obviously you said you've had bouts of it in the past, but did you feel, I guess, more stressed? Did you feel like you'd have built up stress from maybe a couple of bad clients or a couple of hard days at work? And and if you did, what, what were you sort of doing to deal with that then? Um, in terms of like just dealing with stress, um, I think it was just more, you know, mindfulness and trying to process the emotion, like figure out, well, I feel this way. Why do I feel that way? And trying to just tackle the issue head on to remove the cause of the stress. Very logical. I, suppose, I like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I suppose now that I'm part of, of the gym, you know, it's just a really good outlet. Like if I'm having a really bad day, like, you know, something awful's happened or just super stressed, I'm really looking forward to the end of the day because I know that's when I'm going to have my, that's when I do my gym sesh and I'm going to have the opportunity to like put some of that energy into my workout. Plus while I'm working out, I can't check my phone. My problems, you know, while I'm working out, they don't exist. (laughs) The only problem is, oh, I've got to do 10 more push-ups. Like, <laughs> like, New problem. Um, it just really, it's a really good uh, escape and a good way to process the stress and um, those emotions for me. Mm. I think it's a big thing looking at like time away from your phone and your emails and your notifications and your beeps and your calls. And because it's for the rest of your day, like, not speaking to you specifically, but for a lot of people like that, that's all day. You got your phone within one within arm's length, you know, you've got notifications going off, you've got phone calls, you've got messages, you've got emails, you've got, you know, everything going on. There's not actually periods in the day where people get time away from their phone. And it's not until they, they go to sleep that that, that happens. So if, if you are able to come in and, and like you said, you know, put that away, turn the phone off or, not off but silent and, and keep it you know in the car or whatever it's that 45 minutes you know to an hour that you have just away from it and although your problems don't go away you, you're just not thinking about them for that hour and i think for for people who do have stress in their day-to-day jobs which you know a lot of people do having that outlet is really important because what can happen and what i'm sure you've seen it you know i've I've seen here of it a lot as well people deal with stress in in unhealthy ways as well they'll they'll drink more they'll eat uh i mean like drink alcohol more they'll eat uh, a lot of fast food eat in excess you know some people not too many that i know but like they'll turn to drugs or, or they'll turn to other things other vices to help them cope and and sort of have them as coping mechanisms so i think if if nothing else like even if people weren't to see any physical change in their body, I think for for people to be able to have that that time in their days and times in their week where they can take some time out for themselves, um, I think it's really important and would probably make you like a better business owner too. Like I don't know, have you noticed any difference like in your productivity and, and sort of how you work and how you think? Because I know that's a big thing for me. Maybe it's just like probably introduces extra like discipline and self accountability into my life. Um, Cause even though um, at the gym, we've got the trainers are walking around, it's still up to us to do the work, you know, and still up to us to push ourselves. And if a weight's getting a bit too easy, you know, we've got to make that choice. All right. Maybe it's time to push ourselves a bit more. So I think just focusing on that a little bit, um you can bring that into everyday life very easy um and like working for myself there's no one to stop me from having a four-hour lunch break you know (laughs) (laughs) yeah Uh, (laughs) self-accountability is you know very important like i've got to even though i can play by my own rules i've still got to you know be smart keep myself accountable so that i'm being productive at work yeah yeah, and I think there's something in it where you are doing something hard in the day, like workouts, whether you're pushing yourself 
with with the weights doing or we're doing a, a workout or we're doing you know holding a plank and you know meant to go for a minute and you're struggling for the last 15 seconds like there's so many ways physically you can challenge yourself and and i think there is such a a uh, huge carryover benefit to to that with like you were saying the re- the rest of your day and and how you feel because it's like well if I just push myself to get through that horrible workout like you know what else am I capable of doing like it gives you a bit of a newfound strength and a newfound like you said discipline um, h- how do you keep yourself accountable work wise like uh, obviously working for yourself and, and and me too like I there are times where I'm sitting at my computer and I, I get a notification and all of a sudden it's been 15 minutes or 30 minutes and I'm like, oh shit, like I haven't done anything in the last <laughs> half an hour. So do you, do you take any measures to sort of keep yourself productive and accountable in that respect? Um, that's something I struggle with a lot as well, actually. Um, but it's essentially, if there's some, if I don't want, if I'm not feeling like I want to do the work and I'm getting fidgety and I'm getting that instinct to check my phone or do something else, you know, I'll I'll just take a take a second, step away, maybe get myself a cold drink. You know, even if it's like a two minute walk around the house, just something to change my environment and kind of scratch the itch. Um, and then I'll come back and and get to work. I think it's also dependent on like, you know, the stuff that I've got to do that day. Is it uh, urgent? Is it important? Or is it just stuff that needs to be done? Um, if there's important stuff, normally I'm pretty good at staying on track. But um, that is a real challenging one. Yeah. But once you get into that groove, normally it's pretty hard to stop me. So. Yeah. No, I, I, I feel that. Like there's some days where you're just rolling one thing after another and then there's other days it's a lot more challenging. Uh, but yeah, I think you need to prioritise things for sure. And it's funny, like, the important things always get done. It's just the things that maybe aren't right at the top of that. And it's like, oh, that can wait. And then, you know, tomorrow comes and then maybe push it back. And it's not till it becomes urgent that you do it. So that's something that I'm, I kind of work on as well. And I, I found that for me, I work better if I like give myself an allotted amount of time. So I'll say, okay, I'm going to work hard here for 30 minutes, let's say, and then I'll have a 10 minute break to, you know, like you said, go grab a drink, go to the toilet, you know, play with my dogs for a couple of minutes, like whatever, but find as, as opposed to just trying to, you know, work for four hours straight or, or, you know, longer, like I find I'm more efficient when I work in those smaller bite-sized bits. And I might, like I say, I, and I will do it. Like I'll set a timer for 30 minutes, 30 minute AMRAP if we're talking at it in like gym terms see how much i can get done and then when the 30 minutes is up you know regardless of what, what i'm doing i'll stop and then just take some time and then come back and and try to sort of replicate that as many times over as i can um because it, it can be challenging by yourself you've got no one looking over you. you you don't really have a schedule as much or you know if you've got a job like and you know, obviously you've got higher kpis or timelines or whatever so you kind of need to force them upon yourself yeah yeah so, yeah, interesting just to get hear how other, I guess, self-employed people do it. Yeah. Generally, the days that I have meetings or errands to run, even if it's like going to the post office or something as simple as that, those are the days I'm most productive because I've gotten had the opportunity to leave the house and do something else um, instead of just being in front of the computer all day. Yeah, yeah. I think there's so many more people that work from home too now. Like I think this would be very poignant conversation for for people who do work from home. And I and I quite often discuss it with people because it's you know a big part of my my week. And other people have trouble switching off too, which I I find that can happen too. Like you know whether it is you know five o'clock, six o'clock, whatever time it is that you sort of say okay, like I'm done with work for today, and now I'm going to go and you know have dinner and whatever knowing that you can just slide back into your office and and do that like it, it's a very uh gray area and i think having those boundaries in place is really important like for me like the office i'm in now this is the only time i'm in here is to do work like i don't have anything else in this office where i would be to need to be in here i also don't like eat eat in here like i don't bring food in here i'll have like a 
you know, water bottle with me, but I won't like have my lunch here or whatever. I try to keep that quite separate because I find otherwise you just don't have any boundaries then. And you can find yourself being like, oh, I'll just go and like check that email or I'll go and, you know, check that or I'll go and do this. So I always, whenever I finish for the day, I, you know, quote unquote clock off and don't come back in and I'll turn my notifications off and everything. So, you know, if people ever try to reach out to me at the night time, it's not that I'm being rude. Uh, if it's like a gym related thing, like I just will get back to them the next day because I don't literally don't, don't get the notification. But I think that's important to have batteries when you are working from home, regardless of what your, your role is. Otherwise you can, it can end up just sort of consuming, consuming your, your days, you know, from, from wake up to bedtime. Yeah, absolutely. I think all aspects of life, we should, you know, it's healthy to have boundaries in place. Um, when I first started my business, I would easily work till I woke up till like 9 p.m. at night um, and it just sucked. So, you know, I kind of introduced this kind of concept, like for me, like I, in my head, I'm a nine to five worker, you know, that's when I'm on the clock. That's when I want to be available. And then after that, I've learned to kind of switch off and move away and more focus on my personal stuff after that. Yeah. And I think there's an argument, like let's say before you were doing like nine till nine, like back in when you started, you're probably getting no more done than you would between nine to five. Anyway, you, you're just taking eight hours of work and stringing it over 12 hours. So it's like, probably. you know, there, I think, I mean, obviously not, it's hard. You can never actually determine if that's true or not, but I think there is something in, in knowing that, you know, you have to get this done in X amount of time and not just sort of being working, but not really, you know, sort of half doing this and half checking that. And then you can manage your time a lot, a lot easier and a lot better as well. But yeah, absolutely. One thing, um, switching gears slightly, one thing that I think a lot of people who know you might not know is that you're a bit of a musician. So how about you tell us about about that, mate? What uh, what do you play? What's your band called? Give us a bit of a heads up on that. Yeah, well, um, maybe three to about four years ago, um, I was at a party with uh, some of my friends and they kind of shuffled up to me and said, hey, Dave, uh, I hear you, you play the bass guitar. And I was kind of, I hadn't played it in very many years. So I was like, oh, yeah, I guess so. And they're like, well, we've got a band that we, we've started and we need a bass player. Would you like to come, you know, have a jam with us? So I said, all right, you know, give it a shot. What's there to lose? So I showed up and we just played a couple cover songs and um, I just had a lot of fun. And, and you know, four years later, I'm still with, with these guys. So um we pretty much write all of our own music now. We rarely play any like covers. Um, we play at places like Helms at the Station Hotel, uh, the Lass, the Newcastle Hotel. We played at the Uni. Um, we played at the Cambridge Hotel. Um, next month we're going up to Port Macquarie to play uh, some gigs there. So it's just a lot of fun. We focus on our own music and we do kind of like pop rock or surf rock style music oh, and, and what, are you, what are you guys called so we're called acacia blue okay now that that's cool i think it's um it's something i never got into but i would have loved to be able to strum along the guitar or something but it's um from where, when we talk about it it does seem like a lot of fun and like playing gigs like you, you kind of always seem to have your best time doing that so do yeah. you do a bit of vocals as well? Uh, I do backing vocals <laughs> for some songs. Um, I'm definitely not confident enough to do any more than that. So, hey, I, I saw you but, at the uh, karaoke night that night. I saw you taking the lead. Yeah, did you? Oh, no. <laughs> uh, music is a lot of fun and brings a lot of joy to many people's lives. And having the opportunity to be up on the stage kind of being the source of that is just an incredible feeling. Um, so, you know, going to the gym, playing music, having hobbies and having things in my life that add value to my life, you know, that it makes, you know, it gives me a lot of happiness, helps me with my mental health, physical health, um, 
and that's a great way that I deal with stress as well. So, yeah, and that's oh, what I love it's it. all about. I mean, obviously you work hard and, you know, you're starting to take care of your health more and, and working out and, and training and, you know, having some other hobbies as well. I think it all feeds into a, you know, good ecosystem of being, you know, healthier and happier and feeling better and enjoying life. So I, I think it's fantastic, mate. Yeah. And we might have to get you in for the uh, Christmas party, Acacia Blue, putting on a performance for us. Yeah, maybe. Uh, Special uh, performance. Have, yeah, we might have to um, get you guys booked soon. It seems like you're getting booked out pretty quick. So I have to talk to you, yeah. mate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you book us now before we, we get booked out for Christmas. Yeah, yeah maybe Christmas next year if you become that popular yeah but, i don't think we've booked out next year yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh we'll leave it there mate it was it was really really great chatting and, and sharing a little bit more about um obviously your story and how you came to this point to to be with us and and i think it's um it's always nice to see like a, a younger bloke like yourself in their 20s who who is you know, looking out for their own mental health and, and and looking out for their own physical health as well. You know, I think it, that's been a huge shift in society where younger people are starting to realise the importance of both. And perhaps in times gone by, it wasn't really on people's radar until, you know, later on in life when something bad would happen with their physical health or they would start to have some some troubles with their mental health. But sort of getting in front of that and, and being proactive and taking some measures to be able to support themselves with physical health and mental health. And I think if we learn and, and do those things when we're younger, it's going to pave the way for a much healthier and happier life as we start to age. So great to see you, mate. Yeah. Cheers, mate. And thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Of course, it. mate. Of course, anytime. But no, thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone, for listening. And we'll talk to you on the next one. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If there is a topic you'd like us to discuss that we haven't already, please make sure you reach out in Facebook Messenger and we'll do our best to cover it in the upcoming episodes. For those of you enjoying the podcast, we'd love for you to like, subscribe and leave us a rating. It really helps us grow and spread the good word. Hoping you're all having a great day and we'll be sure to see you on the next one.